Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I apologize in advance for uh, whatever errors I'm making while I'm reading. Mm -hmm. I'm tired, I just flew in from France yesterday. <gasps> so, um, I'm gonna read from a new book, which is a collection of short stories. It's my first edition bilingual, French and English. Um, and I'm gonna read one of one of them. And if you know me, You'll expect it to be politically incorrect, <laughs> and it might be right. You'll be the judge of it. It's called 27 Years. Barely 6.10 in the morning, and Isabella... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, that might be relevant. Uh, the title of the book is Wishful Thinking, The Verities of jean Kevin. Barely 6.10 in the morning, and Isabella was already removing her five-inch stilettos, which hurt her feet, yet sculpted so divinely her legs that it still provoked admiring looks from her workmates and their public. Isabella had gone home in her elegant one-bedroom apartment on Rue Molitor in the 16th district of Paris, close to the Michelange Molitor subway station. She had indeed chosen the neighborhood because she had always been fascinated by the Italian Renaissance art. It was also the reason she had chosen the first name when she had started in her line of work. She had had the refinement of the Italian art to decorate tastefully her Parisian apartment and of which she was very proud despite the growing difficulties in her work. 27 years. It had been 27 years since she had, had chosen this work where people like her live at night. She had been told soon after her arrival, freshly landed from her native Lausanne, by being independent, very gifted, hence very thought after by her client and very respectful of the sanitary protocols. That did not take away anything from her oral dexterity, from the depth, the depth of her nocturnal throes of passion in the forest. Isabella had also learned to defend herself, and her reputation was such that none of her clients, regulars or not, had ever laid a hand on her. Her workmates called her self called her self-defense skills regularly when one of her clients would be a bit too aggressive. In compensation, Isabella always accepted a little money or a gift as gratitude. She had therefore taken full advantage of the fruits of her labor and thus had set aside a good pile of money and a juicy investment in the stock market. That expression always made her laugh, laugh like a wink or a nod to her profession. 27 years that she had been subjected to mocking glances from the uh, journal Di uh, D I U R N A L, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, society which had become too puritanical <laughs> and get her lewd looks when nighttime came. 27 years that she had that she did not care about the judgment of others because her life she had chosen it and she knew precisely when she would stop when she would bow out to her workmates many among whom had become friends 27 years that she had seen the ladies woods as they called it shrink inexorably over global warming and political cooling. Gone were the prosperous years when newly elected official invited them to parties. Whose fault was it? Switching to the euro, the austerity, the social networks, the internet and its abuses, 
the growing Pyrenaeism, Pyrenaeism, <laughs> can say, it, which persists in wanting to marginalize the oldest occupation in the world, life's fault, and the evolution of the world and time. All that didn't matter to Isabella anymore. As planned, it was time for her to hang her shoes, so to speak. Isabella was gazing at the boxes that she had insisted on carefully packing herself, always as meticulous as home, at home as, as she had been in her profession, which, had, which she had performed with care during all these years. The movers would come in a few hours and take away her personal effects to the family home of her native Lozère. Isabella had taken care of renovating that house where she had so many mixed souvenirs. Despite it all, her parents being deceased for a few years, she could not fathom any other place to retire away from the stairs, away from the clients, away from her life as Isabella. With the few hours she had left, she prepared her departure. She took off her blonde wig, leaving naturally dark hair and still silky at her age. She took off her fake eyelashes, her last outfit light and revealing, which she had worn that night. She took care of placing everything in a trash bag with her stilettos. She took her time re removing her makeup and took a shower. Isabella was becoming, at 50 something years old, Jean Kevin again. The tranny, the queer as people called her, was no more. Jean Kevin drove away in his car, preceding the movers who would arrive later in the middle of the natural, lush, and green valleys of Lozère. Jean Kevin would say nothing in his well deserved retirement of his past life as Isabella and would live some beautiful years in the preserved nature of his Lozère that he had only seen rarely in the past 27 years. His peaceful refuge opened to him with tranquility, the tranquility that Jean Kevin had always wanted to find again when he would have decided to place in the closet the life of Isabella, the life he had chosen. In life, we always have a choice, Jean Kevin thought serenely while opening the door of his house, his home of forever in Lozère. Thank you. If you want to see the book, come see.